here at Ocala, 62 miles in all preconditioning. So um, now I can turn around. I have 23%. Let's see if um, I did this right. I think I actually might need to burn off a little bit of extra juice here. Let's see. That should be Windermere right there, 325. About another 63 miles, maybe. Another uh, 73 miles, minus 8%. So um, I'm gonna have to drive slow. Uh, hopefully not have to top off, but I'll keep a close eye on this. I'll just have to work on getting my efficiency up compared to what I did getting here. Man, I was using the app to figure out how much I would have at arrival and I must have not been paying close enough attention and screwed that up. But here we go. Let's hit the road, 73 miles. I'll drive a lot slower. Try to get this to 0%, which would be super ideal. 0% at arrival, that's what we're going for. All right, so I've been doing everything I can. We've cut that margin by 7%. So still have 1% to make up. I've got 23 miles and I've got 6% to do it. So um, I think I can figure this out. Hopefully we don't have to pull over on the side of the road. I've got the air conditioning turned off at the moment, which is not very comfortable, but uh, yeah, gonna do everything I can. Fingers crossed this works out. So we did arrive at 0%, just arrived at 0%, it just turned 0%, sorry. So um, it's not super deep into 0% is able to make this all work out. But what I wanted to do is um, take a look, cause we're at 0.3%, we didn't get any uh, preconditioning. I tried tricking it with an earlier charging stop and it wouldn't um, uh, precondition, but we're gonna set up a camera here so we can keep an eye on this and do our uh, charging test here. So that was another 72 miles and this time a 500 or 359 one hour per mile because I was driving super slow. I'm sure people appreciated that, but let me get the camera set up. Let me get this all going and uh, we'll get plugged in here um, to our V4 stalls in Windermere, Florida. Come on, baby. Give us the best charge. Let's do it. You can do this. I'm super anxious to see how this works out with our uh, new 325 kilowatt charge rate on these V4s being unlocked. Got to keep a close eye on the camera to make sure that it doesn't stop recording and I'll have to move our charge Keep going. 310 would not be great. I want to see 324, 325. Come on. Amps are already dropping, so that's not good. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. Man, that's really frustrating. Uh, we should have seen 325 like right away. And this isn't gonna do it. And watching the amps continue to drop, that's uh, not a good sign of uh, being able to charge any faster. Battery temp is finally starting to get up to where it would need to be 
at ideal that's the challenge one of these recent updates the lower the charge you get i don't know what what threshold stops preconditioning the battery So we're getting ready to turn into 80%, I think. I gotta look back at the numbers at what time um, we hit 10%, but I think we are looking at about 36, 37 minutes um, to hit uh, 80%, 10 to 80%. And that would be consistent with what I've done in the past. However, the past, I did that on 800 volt chargers. So those were Electrify America chargers, not Tesla chargers. So this is the first time I've been able to at least duplicate that on um, a Tesla charger. And it's important to note uh, at peak charge rate of 311 versus 324, 325 kilowatts. Um, I don't know how much different that charge rate is gonna be, but I have no idea how I could possibly get here with a optimal battery temperature to be able to get maximum charge rate if um, if the truck won't precondition at arrival near 
even a rival near 10% didn't seem to want a precondition at uh, the Oklahoma Charger that was originally set to help make this thing uh, precondition. So I'm going to let this thing go up to 85% or maybe even 90% before I unplug just so I can get a full log of this charging curve. And I got to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to make this work um, as it sits. All right, so I'm about to hit 90% and we've been charging for, I think something like 46 minutes um, to get to 90%, which from 0%, that's really not that bad. But um, as you can see, we start to really slow down after we get to 82, 85% uh, state of charge. That's when things just, this is why you don't charge 100% on road trips. But nonetheless, we have the data now and that is helpful for um, plotting out both the charge curve and the progress that's being made on enhancing the charge curve in the Cybertruck. So as soon as this hits 90%, I'm going to stop recording on our camera. Um, special shout out to our big helper, our big charging uh, helper here. And we're going to unplug now. I will get home and consolidate all this so that we can go over the exact numbers. So after all the charging, after getting back home and crunching the numbers, I've actually got all the details here so we can break this down, but not only comparing it to how this thing did versus Electrify America with 800 volt charging, but also I was able to get some V3 charging data from Electric Vehicle Knowledge Exchange. And this is public, it's on the web. I'll have a link in the description for credit, but I did use their charging curve for V3 charging or 250 kilowatt charging to compare that also with what we're seeing here. Now, as you saw for yourself, we did not see 325 kilowatts. And it's really interesting because what we're seeing with Tesla's charging equipment here, at least in this case, is Tesla is ramping up amps really high, 860-ish amps. And at the end of the charging session, we're looking at about 400 volts in charging. So rather than the other way where we'd have high voltage and lower amps, that is how Tesla is pumping out the juice to try to get you as close to 325 as they can. In this case, 311. Now there was another test today where somebody went from 15 to 80% and did it in 35 minutes. And if we backtrack into the data here, I also did 35 minutes going 15 to 80%. But here's the numbers as they sit let's compare them now charging from 10 percent to 80 percent was 36 minutes and that compares to 35 minutes on electrify america 20 to 80 percent 33 minutes or the same as what i got on electrify america 10 to 15 percent was actually a minute slower than electrify america and this is where not being able to hit that peak hurt us the most as a matter of fact if you look at the charge rate in the first 50% of the pack, we can't achieve what we were able to get on Electrify America. And again, not being able to go to higher voltage instead of amps, there's a much different heat equation in this charging curve. The other thing that I noticed right away was this charge curve is nothing like EA also at the beginning of the charge. So at Electrify America, I was able to get to 324, 325 kilowatt charge rate. I was able to maintain that for about 12%. So from one or 2% all the way to about 12%. I was at the full charge rate it would accept. And we didn't even dip below 300 kilowatts until something like 17%. At that same 17% state of charge, we were looking at 262 kilowatt charge rate on the Tesla charger. We actually dropped below 300 kilowatt really quickly with Tesla's charger. Now, looking at the charge curve, specifically the end of it, where we have about 90 kilowatts for a long period of time, 
This would suggest that the charge curve today is the same charge curve that we had back in July, which was the last major enhancement where we actually did have some improvement happen from previously in the Cybertruck. So we're still sitting on that same charge curve, it seems, since at least summer of last year. Now let's go look at how things are compared to a V3 charger from Tesla. Again, I want to give a shout out to Electric Vehicle Knowledge Exchange. This is where I got this information. It's pretty recent, but their charge curve on a Cybertruck, it peaked at 256 kilowatts and it actually sat in that peak until 21%, basically right away, all the way to 21%, which is not terrible. So from zero to 21% or where the full peak is achieved on V3, it's six minutes and 34 seconds on V3 versus six minutes and 28 seconds on V4. Basically the same to get to 21%. Getting zero to 50%, however, this is where we start to see our gaps. So 19 minutes and 49 seconds on V3, 18 minutes and 17 seconds on V4, a minute and a half faster to get 50% state of charge. But zero to 80%, 45 minutes and 33 seconds versus 39 minutes and 46 seconds. It's almost six minutes faster to charge zero to 80% on this V4 charger than it is on V3. This is actually significant improvement. When we're talking about five minutes of charge improvement, that's where we start to see measurable improvement where you are going to notice this on a road trip. So yes, a V4 is going to get you farther faster in a Cybertruck than the V3, especially when we're talking about charging something like 70 or 80% on these long stretches. We also have seen because of somebody else doing some testing that even if you show up at 15% instead of 0%, you're actually able to achieve the high end of that peak charge rate. So it didn't matter if he plugged in at 15% and I plugged in at 0%, he actually technically got a better charge rate than I did. The last thing I wanna look at is Tesla's V4 charging versus Electrify America at 10, 20, and 30 minute charging intervals. So at 10 minutes, we would get to 34% on Tesla's charging equipment or 36% on Electrify America. At 20 minutes, 55% on Tesla or 57% on Electrify America. And at 30 minutes, 68% on Tesla, 70% on Electrify America. So literally the benefit that you get on Electrify America is in that first 10 minutes. After that, it is the same charge basically from there. And really we're talking a couple of minutes maybe in benefit that you're gonna gain from actually utilizing 800 volts of charging infrastructure. So the point of all of that is I think it's pretty incredible that Tesla is able to pull out essentially ramping through high amperage on existing 400 volt architecture that's very similar to the V3 chargers that we have today and get you the same type of performance that you would need 800 volt charging equipment or these 350 kilowatt chargers that we see from EA to do the same thing. So less voltage, more amperage, two different strategies, two different ways of doing this, but essentially arriving at very similar results. Obviously I was disappointed. I wasn't able to see 325 kilowatts in the Cybertruck today at Tesla's charger, but based on what I did see, if I had seen 325 of Tesla's equipment, it would have been 325, and then a moment later, it would have started stepping down as it did today for me, starting at 311. Now, on a higher voltage charger on EA, I'm actually able to hit 325, and I'm able to sit there for a good chunk of time, about 20% of the battery charge. So at Electrify America, we're talking about five minutes of solid charge time at the peak rate. So that is definitely possible. And once V4 expands and starts to deliver 500 kilowatts, we'll see what the Cybertruck is able to accept from that. But I think that's when things are gonna start getting interesting because it'll start to prioritize higher voltage than it does today. That's something Tesla doesn't do right now that they will be doing in the future with higher output charging. So that's it for today. I thank you for joining and I can't wait to catch you on the next one.